Shalom. I give all praises on them glories. The Howl Bashim, Howl Shah, Bashim, Rakakadash. And the honor to elders and apostles of Great Most Holy Thomas Truth and peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful elect. Oh, wait. 1244 for the time. And 44% on my battery life. <laughs> oh, man. All praises. Yeah, Howl Bashim, Howl Shah, man. But, um, yeah. <clears throat> literally found this video let me close that I found this video here and I thought it was um educational <clears throat> so yeah I'm gonna uh, play it and get some precepts US and the Soviet Union had to build underground silos to house nuclear missiles that could be launched at a few minutes notice. Now one of the technical challenges they had to overcome that you might not think of is acoustics. Launching a missile in such a confined silo generates a loud sound so loud that it would have shaken apart the missiles before they could even launch. And that reminds me of a scripture right there. <clears throat> like he made mention, he said that they're loud. And just like it makes mention in um what is it again? Second Peter three and ten. It says, But the devil the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. That's those intercontinental ballistic missiles, they are very loud. And it says, And the elements shall mount with fervent heat, the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. And yeah, that's by way of those intercontinental ballistic missiles, man. And even Psalms. No, one and I think it's three. Yeah. It says, surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. <clears throat> and yeah, that noise and pestilence being the nuclear missiles, man. <clears throat> Because like it makes it mention, like it makes mention down in verse five, it says, "Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day." And yeah, man, <clears throat> the arrow being um, symbolic for what well, other symbolic? Literally, that that word arrow is basically what the prophets called the ICBMs. <clears throat> so in this in this age. It would be called an ICBM, but when the prophets had the vision, they called them arrows. <coughs> and just like it makes mention in verse 6, nor for the person that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. And literally, <coughs> that's exactly what the Lord created um, the ICBM to do, which is waste. <coughs> Isaiah 54 and 16. It says, Behold, I've created the smith that blows the coals in the fire. And the, and the modern day smith being um the the scientist, but first and foremost the German scientist that some went to Russia and some went to America. Hence why those two have the most ICBMs. And it says, And that bringeth forth an instrument for his work, and I've created a waster to destroy. <clears throat> And yeah, literally, the work, the work of the Lord God of Hosts, is for Him to destroy America, man. And let me go to Jeremiah. Fifteen and twenty-five. It says, "The Lord have opened His armory, and the armory is somewhere where the weapons are kept. <clears throat> and I've brought forth the weapons of His indignation. For this is the Lord, Sakia. This is the work of the Lord God of Hosts in the land of the Chaldeans." <clears throat> And yeah, the land of the Chaldeans being America, and the reason why America has been given that name is because of the witchcraft and the enchantments that it does. And I'll quickly prove that Isaiah 47, and I think it's 9. Yeah, but these two things shall come to thee in a moment in one day the loss of children and widowhood, they shall come upon thee in their perfection. So, yeah, so when these plagues hit America, they're going to receive the plagues in their perfection. For the multitude of thy sorceries, and for the great abundance of thine enchantments, for thou hast trusted in thy wickedness, thou hast said none seeth me, thy wisdom and thy knowledge it hath perverted thee, and thou hast said in thine heart I am and none else beside me. And that's basically <clears throat> talking about Esau, man. 
in verse 10. And yeah, not forgetting to go to Isaiah 13 and 19 because this is this is this is what the missiles are going to be used for. <clears throat> and it says, And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the be of the Shaldees' excellency, shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. So you see, and how did the Lord overthrow Sodom and Gomorrah? He did it with fire and brimstone. And if you go down to verse 20, it says, It shall never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation, neither shall the Arabian pitch tender, neither shall the shepherds make their fold there, but the wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and the houses shall be full of doleful creatures, and owls shall dwell there, and satires shall dance there. Or maybe satires. I, I say satires. But here yeah, carrying on, it says, And the wild beasts of the island shall cry in their desolate houses, and dragons in their pleasant palaces, and her time is near to come, and her days shall not be prolonged. So you see, the Lord is going to use these missiles for his work to destroy Babylon. And let me get this real quick. <laughs> and then I'll continue playing the video. <clears throat> Jeremiah 51 and 11. And it says, Made by the arrows, gather the shields of the Lord. Yahweh Bashem, how shall I have raised up the spirit of the king of the Medes? For his device is against Babylon or America to destroy it. Because it's the vengeance of the Lord. Yahweh Bashem, how shall I? The vengeance of his temple. Now carry on with this. So the walls of the inside of the silo had to be covered in acoustically absorbent tiles, very similar to those in the world's quietest room. But after all of the technical challenges were sorted, what I wanted to know was how could they have launched these missiles very quickly if needed, but also never by accident? So I visited one of these Titan missile silos in the Arizona desert to find out exactly what it would have taken to launch a nuclear missile. Well, Derek, this is level two of the silo. We're down some 10 meters below the surface now. And this is the launch duct. And that is Titan two the largest and most powerful missile weapon system ever deployed by the United States. Well, what kind of bomb is in there? That is a thermonuclear bomb. It's a nine megaton weapon. Compared to Hiroshima? Oh, call it 650 times. An enormously powerful weapon. And what was the idea with it? The idea behind Titan II was to instill enough fear in the mind of the enemy to cause them to think twice about launching an attack against us, knowing that 10 meters below the desert in our fortified concrete bunker, we could ride out their first strike and live to retaliate. If we're forced to do that, the consequences for the enemy would be so unspeakably horrible that maybe they would prefer not to get into it with us in the first place. That's the essence of deterrence. This missile is no longer active, but the launch system is preserved. And I wanted an insight into how it felt to control this incredible power. Can we go launch one? I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> there were 54 of these silos, each one staffed 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Ready to launch their missiles on the exclusive order of the President of the United States. All right, then. Have a seat here, Commander. Thank you. So, this is the control center. This is where the crew waited to launch the missile. And how do we know that we need to launch? So, we're going to write down every letter and number that we hear in a form in this notebook. I'm going to write it down in this notebook. We'll compare each other's work. If we agree that we've copied the message correctly, then we have what's called a valid message. And authorization to take our lock off the big red safe. You know your combination, I know mine, we don't know each other. So we both have to agree to get inside. Inside we find authenticator cards. I'll give those to you. In the secret message, they sent us a seven character code word. We're gonna look at the first two letters of the code word. We're gonna find the authenticator that has those first two letters. If the card here matches the code word they sent us, then this is a legitimate order to go. That gives us permission to put in our launch keys. I've already put them in for it. Key right here for you, Commander. And for me, there's a key way over here. Keys are far enough apart that not even a long-armed guy like me can reach them both. Keys must be turned within two seconds of each other and held or spring-loaded 
so held for five seconds to start the watch. That guarantees that two people will be required to do it. You just can't run back and forth and do it yourself. And last but not least, we get the secret unlock code for the missile. Six little wheels. Each little wheel has 16 letters of the alphabet. Nominally 17 million combinations. Only one will operate the missile. This is the fail-safe that prevents an unauthorized or accidental launch of the missile. So once we have all those things, authentication, keys, code, we're good to go. All set? Let's do it. Give me a countdown, three, two, one, turn keys. We'll send this thing on its way. After you, Commander. Three, two, one, turn keys. And hold. Hey, you may release. That's all there is to it. The green light turns on, says launch, enable. For all intents and purposes, that should say, welcome to World War III, because that's pretty much what it boils down to. When you turn the key, you are committed. There is no oops switch anywhere. When the batteries come to full power, the missile will transfer to internal power, meaning that it is fully independent. About that same time, the silo door starts to slide open. It'll slide through a security radar beam and set off the alarm. That gives the silo soft. Guidance Go means the internal guidance computer has full control of the mission. In a few seconds, we'll have main engine start. From engine start, we'll build up thrust, pop the hold down bolts, and off we go into the wild blue line. So that's it. Basically, just ended life on Earth. As you know it. In these silos, the Titan missiles had a terrifying purpose. But they were also put to much better uses, minus their warhead, of course. For example, the Voyager spacecraft was launched into space atop a Titan III missile. And Neil Armstrong took his first flight into space. Atop- yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> That's basically it for that video. Because we know, <laughs> we know Isa hasn't gone to space. And we know Neil Armstrong hasn't gone to space neither. Because the Lord has set a bounty that cannot pass. <laughs> Yeah, Job 14 and 5, he says, Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou has the point his bounds that he cannot pass. So no, the Lord has control over Esau. <clears throat> and the Lord can destroy Esau whenever he wants. But these prophecies have to come to pass. <clears throat> before that can happen. But yeah, let me go to Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14 and 12 <clears throat> it says how thou fallen from heaven O Lucifer son of the morning how art thou cut down to the ground which did his weaken the nations and when it's saying <clears throat> how thou fallen from heaven it's basically saying how have you fell from power or from rulership <clears throat> because the ones that rule the earth they're in a secret council and it's the secret council of the wicked and that word lucifer just means um light bearer it means light bearer and knowing that the secret counsels of the wicked psalm 64 t says hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity being where these top edomites are involved in man they do witchcraft there they do rituals there <clears throat> they do nothing but iniquity in these secret councils and literally the word light bearer is basically or close to the word illuminati which that word illuminati just means light bearers not light bearers and like not light bearers enlightened ones slakia illuminati means enlightened ones <clears throat> so this is talking about 
these Edomites, man, and their secret councils. Because they're the one who has power over the earth, man. Job 9 24, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. And they were the ones that could basically weaken the nations. And it says, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north, and the stars of God being the Israelites. <clears throat> and it says, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High. And yeah, this is Esau Edom, man. It says, Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Basically, meaning they're going to be brought low, man. They're going to be taken out of power. They're going to be in a low, a low state. <clears throat> where they're naturally supposed to be, which is the base men of the earth, man, at the bottom. <clears throat> and it says, They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth tremble and did shake kingdoms? And you see, it didn't say, Is this the spirit? Because people seem to think um, these secret councils. It's, um, it's basically the spiritual demon Satan. When it's not, it's just a group of, of old Edomite men who have plans for world domination. <clears throat> and it says, um, it says that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof that opened not the house of his prisoners. <clears throat> and like it makes mention, it says, um, that made the world as a wilderness. And that's exactly what those nuclear missiles are going to do. And we know that Esau's blessing. Oh, where is it? Uh. <clears throat> Wait there. Yeah, I know, I know what I need to read from. <laughs> it's lucky I was just um, making sure, just double checking. I like to be thorough when I read the scriptures. <clears throat> Again, let me start. Uh, where is it? Yeah, Genesis 27 and 38. It says, Esau said unto his father, Has thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. And that's uh, the reason why these so called Caucasians, they run the earth right now because it's a part of their blessing. And that's why being Israelites, we shouldn't. We shouldn't be um jealous because literally <clears throat> their rulership is, is short man. Yeah, Joel twenty and five. It says the tr that the triumphing of the wicked is short and the joy of the hypocrite but for a moment. So yeah man, literally their rulership it's really not that long to be honest. And even then, when the Lord's kingdom comes, the Israelites are going to be ruling forever and ever, even ever and ever. So, <laughs> I don't really mind Esau ruling right now. <clears throat> it's a part of what the Lord said would happen. And carrying on. And it says, And by thy sword shalt thou live, and shalt serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass when thou shalt have dominion. Thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. And yeah, that sword going into those weapons, man, being <clears throat> that great sword, that ICBM, 
which is able to um kill millions with, with just one weapon man let me go to um revelation 6 and 4 and it says and there went out another horse that was red symbolizing for esau edom and i can mean mention the first came out red <coughs> being esau didn't have menelin so when it came out the blood was shown forth through his skin and it says and power was given unto him power was given to him that sat down to take peace from the earth and that they shall kill one another and there was given unto him a great sword yeah and that's the blessing of esau edom man and it's through these edomites that um that the first icbms were made like i made mention of um isaiah 54 and 16 the smith that blows the coals on the fire, those German scientists, man, they're Edomites. They're the ones who made it. And this is what these missiles are going to do. <coughs> Jewel 2 and 3. It says, A fire devolved before them, being in when the warhead detonates, the fire issues out. Just like it makes mention in Revelation um, 9. <coughs> Revelation 9 and 16, basically on down. It says the fire, smoke and brimstone issued out of their mouths. And it says I'm behind them a flame burneth. And that's what's going to cause the missile to fly. And it says the land is as the garden of Eden before them. So signs of life and inhabitants. And behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. So yeah, when these missiles detonate, what's going to be left is a desolate wilderness. Just like it makes mention in Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14 and 17, it says, um, no, let me start at 16. I remember what it said in Joel 2 and 3, man. Actually, no, Joel, yeah, Joel 2 and 3. It says that these missiles left, left it as a desolate wilderness. You know, let me just search it real quick. Desolate wilderness. Yeah, Joel 2 and 3, it says, yeah. It says, the land is as a garden of Eden before them. So before the missiles hit, the sides of life and inhabitants. And behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. So yeah, when these missiles detonate, it becomes a desolate wilderness. And that's why America is going to be left as a complete desert. Because of these missiles. Now let me read Isaiah 14 and 16. It says, They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble and did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners? So because of these missiles that these Edomites made, it's going to turn the world into a wilderness, man. <clears throat> you know what? Let me go back to Joel. Because, um... Joel 2 and 4, it says, The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so shall they run. So remember that. Joel seen, seen it, man. Joel seen it. Revelation 9 and 16. It says, And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000, and I heard the number of them being 200 million missiles, man. And it says, and thus I saw the horses in the vision and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire and a jasnet and brimstone and the heads of the horses were the heads of lions being the warheads. Why? Because <clears throat> there's three stages to an ICBM launch. It launches and then it goes to the upper atmosphere and then it starts detaching itself from the missile. And when the, when the missile is in range, the warhead will det detach from the rest of the missile. And what does the damage is the nuclear warhead. And literally, <clears throat> just like um, just like a lion, the power is in its mouth, being its bite force. And just like these nuclear warheads, the power is, is, is inside them, man. And when they explode, the fire issues out. And that's what it says, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. And that's what's going to cause um, <clears throat> America or the land to be left a desolate, as a desolate wilderness. And it says, for the power, it's lucky, but by these three were the third part men killed 
I'm about the fire, I'm about the smoke, I'm about the brimstone which issued out of their mouths, being the first part of men being these Edomites. And it says, for their powers in their mouth going into the fire and in their tails, just like Joel said. <clears throat> just like Joel said, man. Literally, it's the same thing what Joel said, but it's written differently. A fire devoured before them and behind them a flame burneth. And what did what did John say? It says, for their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails are like unto serpents. And the reason why the tails are like unto serpents is because of the smoke that billows from the back of the missile or the tail of the missile or the fire that um, burns from behind. It creates smoke. And especially when um, the missile is manoeuvring, when it's being targeted, it can manoeuvre and drop a dummy warhead to basically um, deceive the anti-air defence missile systems. And it says, and had heads, and with them they do hurt, being the nuclear warheads. <clears throat> and yeah, let me just quickly get this picture and then I'll close out. Because this is the reason why it says, and they had heads, and with them they do hurt. So as you can see, as you can see, it says, um, missile launches from the ground, boosters eject as fuel is, is expended. And then you see number two, number two, it starts to lose its, um, the rest of the, of the, of the missile. And as you can see, it reaches its peak high at number three, and then, and then number four, it says the warhead releases, the warhead re-enters the atmosphere, and the last air burst detonation. So you see, the last thing to hit is the warheads, and that's what's going to issue out the fire, smoke, and brimstone, and that's what's going to leave Babylon as a wilderness. You know, let me quickly, let me, you know, let me close on that man, Jeremiah fifty and thirteen. It says, because of the wrath of the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Hashem. It shall not be inhabited, but it shall be wholly desolate. Everyone that goes by Babylon shall be astonished and hiss at all her plagues. Put yourselves in array against Babylon round about, all ye that bend the bow. So all those that have nuclear capability, shoot at her, spare no arrows, yet yeah, spare no ICBMs. For she have sinned against the Lord Yahweh, but Shem Shai. Shout against her round about, she have given her hand. Her foundations are fallen, her walls are thrown down. For it is the vengeance of the Lord Yahweh, but Shem Shai. Take vengeance upon her, as she have done, do unto her. So there you go, man. Babylon's completely finished. And I'm going to give all praises and glory to Yahweh, Shema, Hoshua, and Shalom.